dangerous diets. One of the most famous royal diets in history is the diet of King William the Conqueror. Yes, yes, surprisingly enough, when it comes to diets, men sat on them until the 19th century. So, King William became the first in history to go on a diet just for the sake of beauty. All the diets that existed before were for other purposes. So, the Pythagorean diet was designed to get rid of bloating, and the Spartan diet was designed to increase strength and endurance. Well, the powerful king in the 11th century became so obese that he could no longer ride, the horses buckled under his weight. In addition, King Philip of France teased William, calling him a woman in the last month of pregnancy. It's a shame. At the same time, keep in mind, the problem of obesity at that time was extremely rare. People were more worried about how not to die of hunger, and the king had to figure out how to deal with it himself. And he invented his own diet, gathered his will into a fist, and decided, from now on, he refuses to eat. Well, lie in bed and drink alcohol, because this is not food. Oddly enough, the king really lost weight after a few months, and was even able to get back into the saddle. It was you who ruined him. Apparently, the king did not give up his favorite diet, because after some time, he fell off his horse and died. You can't get the words out of the song, it's not beer that destroys people, but a horse. By the way, an alcoholic diet was also followed by one of the very first bestsellers on how to lose weight, written in 1550 eighth year, under the title, The Art of Living Long. The author Luigi Carnara, like William the Conqueror, advised to drink more wine than food. He himself first limited his food to 400 grams a day, and then completely switched to one egg. At the same time, he drank half a liter of wine. It's hardly useful, but Luigi Carnaro managed to live on such a diet for 98 years. But men are prone to an alcoholic diet, what can you do? Women, I must say, have invented another way of using alcohol in order to lose weight. This diet is in ninth place. So, a certain Hannah Woolley, it seems, became the first female professional writer who also earned money from books on home economics and beauty. In 1661, she published a ladies' dictionary, and it contains such advice on how to quickly lose extra pounds. This is bathing in various substances, for example, baths in wine, in which it was necessary to add an infusion of wormwood, mint, chamomile, and sage. Some kind of mulled wine turns out. Apparently, it didn't help much. Otherwise, this wonderful simple recipe would hardly have sunk into oblivion. However, maybe it was a secret conspiracy of husbands who were against wine being used that way. In the eighth place, of our rating is the vinegar diet of Lord Byron. This diet, thanks to the popularity of its inventor and his influence on the minds, almost ruined an entire generation. Byron was worshipped all over the world. Women were crazy about him. Men dreamed of being like him. In general, Lord Byron was the first star who was always on a diet. By nature, he was inclined to fatness and romantic. Pale and thin men were considered handsome in 19th century Europe. And Byron was very fond of flour, dry biscuits. As a result, at the age of 18, he weighed 88 kilograms. To look sophisticated, the poet invented his own diet, vinegar. To achieve a noble pallor and thinness, he drank vinegar before eating, and his main meal was rice, which he soaked again in vinegar. However, he soaked not only rice in vinegar, but also all products, including boiled potatoes and biscuits. The poet himself claimed that this diet invented by him for celebrities, in addition to reducing appetite, also supports mental acuity. In addition to vinegar, Lord Byron also wore a lot of woolen clothes to sweat well. He didn't tell anyone that the side effects of the vinegar diet included vomiting and diarrhea. Well, she really helped the poet. In five years, he lost 32 kilograms. He was already pale and painfully thin, weighing less than 57. Only Lord Byron died at 36 from a fever, which his body simply could not stand with a weakened diet. An autopsy revealed that his internal organs were badly worn out. Doctors associated early death with the vinegar diet. By the way, they always scolded Byron for making a dangerous diet fashionable, but they could not resist his influence on the minds of the generation. Following the famous poet, both men and women were poisoned with vinegar in an attempt to achieve a pale romantic appearance. Well, then they died. If it seems to you that we will not surprise you with anything. Well, you have the seventh place in front of you. At the very beginning of the 20th century, another extraordinary diet appeared to chew before eating, so that you think cotton wool, and she, they say, will tame the appetite. To chew cotton wool was not so disgusting. It was suggested to soak it in gelatin. Fortunately, this diet did not go to the masses. Apparently, there were few people willing to chew cotton wool before eating. Well, in sixth place is the diet of Russia. Yes, there were diets in Russia too. That's just our distant great-great-great-great-great-grandmothers went on a diet, not to lose weight, but on the contrary, to get better. Fashionable model parameters were not welcomed in the old days. No wonder, the words thin in Russian are synonymous with the concepts of skinny, unfit, and bad. Foreign travelers who visited Russia in the old days write that thin women are considered unhealthy here. A beauty should have a delicate and lush physique. And according to the testimony of a foreigner, I quote, therefore, those who are not naturally inclined to fullness are attached to all kinds of Epicureanism with the intention of getting fat. Russian Russian Tsar Alexei Mikhailovich's attending physician, Englishman Samuel Collins, who lived in Russia for nine years, wrote that in pursuit of beauty, I quote, Russian women lie in bed all day, drink Russian vodka, which is very conducive to fatness, then sleep and then drink again. This is the 17th century. As such, vodka does not lead to fullness, but it supposedly improves appetite. Here is such a diet. Of course, the Englishman probably exaggerated here, but still, scientists believe that, apparently. We are talking about a special Russian wedding diet, popular among rich families. A couple of weeks before the wedding, brides literally began to be fattened. They were given a huge amount of sweet and fatty food, so that by the wedding, she was already a real beauty, that is, full-bodied and portly. It was with this diet that the Dutch doctor associated the tragedy of Maria Klepova, whom the first czar of the Romanov dynasty, Mikhail, himself chose during the bride show. Soon after arriving at the palace, the royal bride fell ill. The same Dutch doctor Doctor, Valentine Bills, decided that the girl had digestive problems, since Maria consumed too much sweet, which was brought to her endlessly. He recommended that she eat much less, but others explained that this was impossible, because she had to get married posh Nutella. Then the Dutchman recommended the bride to drink vodka. From this, they say, she will eat better. Maria Klopova, however, never became the Tsar's wife. It is precisely because of this disease. Her stomach ailments stopped only after returning home, and according to one of the versions, the girl was simply poisoned by those who wanted another queen to become.
Well, in fifth place is the diet of Empress Sisi. The 19th century is becoming the first century when women are also involved in the invention of diets. The famous beauty on the throne, Elizabeth of Bavaria, was simply obsessed with them. The same Sisi. She was a real maniac. I weighed myself three times a day and recorded my weight in a special notebook. With the same meticulousness, she measured her waist, calves and wrists three times every day. Can you imagine? She had a waist of 48 centimeters and she wanted to keep it at all costs. So, she invented her own diet, fasting days on raw meat. But not just on raw meat, she called it freshly squeezed veal juice, that is, blood. She even had a special juicer for this, so to speak. Once her husband, Emperor of Austria-Hungary Franz Ferdinand, who adored the beautiful Sisi, almost drank a red drink from a decanter, thinking that it was wine. He was shocked when he found out what was there. But the beautiful Empress did not limit herself to freshly squeezed veal juice. She also smeared herself with this very raw meat before going to bed, wrapped her thighs with a cloth soaked in vinegar to break down fats at night, and all to wipe the nose of young beauties. In general, today is still nothing. Well, now I'm going to tell you which diet ranks fourth in our ranking of the craziest diets in the history of mankind. At the end of the 19th or early 20th century, hunger receded in Europe. There were more products, and everyone began to lose weight, not just aristocrats. It was here that the American Horace Fletcher invented his own weight loss program. He was nicknamed the Great Chewing, and all because he advised those who dream of losing weight to chew every piece of food 32 times until this piece turns into liquid, and then, quote, whatever remains, spit it out, Fletcher was calling. Thanks to such careful chewing, all useful substances are extracted from food, they say. Well, everything else is spat out. Another of its principles is to keep milk, juice, and even water in your mouth until the taste sensation disappears. Remember the wine tasters. They don't drink wine, but they get all the pleasure it gives them. At the same time, the great chewer recommended not to eat when you are in a bad mood. You should not start eating if you are in a bad mood, otherwise you will not have enough patience to experience everything slowly. It's true. In third place, the craziest diets, special pills for weight loss that appeared in the 19th century. It was an extremely profitable business, only they contained dangerous ingredients, arsenic and striacnin. Yes, that deadly poison, which in the previous era was poisoned at the court of competitors, was now advertised as accelerating metabolism. Just a tiny dose, they say. Of course, it was deadly, given that arsenic was not only drunk inside, but also used for cosmetic purposes to improve the complexion. The famous actress, Curtison, and the first beauty blogger of the 19th century, Lola Montes, published the book The Art of Beauty in 1858. There, she gave various beauty recipes that she had seen in different countries, and among them, she writes about how in Bohemia, they say, Czech women drink water and take baths with arsenic to lose weight and keep their skin young. The deadly poison accumulated in the body and killed women. Here is such a deadly life hack from a beauty blogger of the 19th century. Consumption, or tuberculosis, became a real epidemic in the 19th century. At the very beginning of the 19th century, the English Dr. Thomas Beddoes was completely outraged that women specifically expose themselves to consumption in order to lose weight and look more elegant. Indeed, consumption did cause severe weight loss. That's just a side effect, coughing up blood and an early death. Well, in the first place, the most disgusting method in our opinion, for Adam, who wants to have a slim waist, began to sell pills with tapeworm eggs tapeworm. Can you imagine how disgusting it is? The parasite grew inside the lady and devoured all the nutrients. That is, the beauty ate and lost weight before her eyes. The parasite has thickened. Such pills became very popular in the Victorian era. That's just a side effect of such weight loss, severe poisoning, vomiting, dizziness, diarrhea, 